So we have a, a minute before starting. Just to have a feeling. How many of you are familiar with F sharp? All right, cool. All right. And uh, are many familiar with the actor model? All right, cool. So this is a, not just, I will use F sharp um, as a tool to explain the actor model, the actor net. It's not just F sharp talk, right? But if you have any questions about you know, the syntax, semantic, just you know, feel free to stop and, and I'll see if I can answer. So I will spend probably hopefully 20 minutes slides, and then we're gonna pass into the studio to see some real code and how we can leverage F-sharp API with actor model. That's a very, some unique feature. So, well, my name is Ricardo, and uh, I'm originally from Italy. That's my Italian accent, but I live in US for the last nine years in Washington, D.C. And this is the agenda for today. A uh, brief introduction about, you know, what's going on out there in, in the world. Um, we discussed about the Latin Manifesto, um, actor model, what and why. The F -sharp agent, built in in, in, a, in a language. ACA.net, the F -sharp API, built on top of ACA.net. And of course, we're gonna jump in code. I have a, a lot of material to cover, but this is really the three main objectives that I want you to take away today. Uh, it's really that, you know, the, the free lunch is over and uh, we're facing new challenge today in a, in a programming world. And um, today we have to face the, the reality that we have to build application with concurrency in mind, uh, possibly you know, with the beginning, in the beginning. And the actor model, I mean, I put the, bar, um, the best, I'm a biased, but is a great concurrent programming model that uh, really uh, is able to scaling up and scaling out uh, using the same uh, programming model. So, so what's going on in the world out there, right? So in the last 10 years, we see that um, there was significant change in the, uh, in the world of computing. Um, the demand of the distributed system has exploded. And our user really um, has high expectation in the user experience in application. They wanted um, applications that are fast, reliable, that never fail, right? And with this demand, really, also the requirement to write our application change. And we need, uh, um, as developer, we need a tool that make us possible to, to, to write this application that we still want to know what application is scalable, concurrent, reliable, and so on. So anyways, if you search online for the hottest technology, you see you know, the list. We have reactive uh, cloud computing, very hot. And they are all combined with this big data world, right? So really, it's get a bit um, complicated uh, how build application is still uh, fulfill all the requirement that we want to build our application. So how do we achieve this, right? What kind of tool, technologies, architecture we have to embrace to, to uh, write this kind of application this way? So this is a few quotes from some published book. And what it really means is that um, the landscape of distributed cloud computing uh, represent a dramatic change in the modern programming, right? Is reality. We are still talking today how write a correct concurrent uh, application passing from one single core to multiple core. And today we're already starting to say, okay, but what about we have different machines still put in the network, right? So the problem got bigger and bigger. And with all these questions and issues, there is also the rise of solution. So how many of you are familiar with the Active Manifesto? Cool, a few of you. So the Redirecti Manifesto um, set what's your application need uh, to meet this model because the world is going reactive, right? Responsive, it really means that it doesn't matter how your application is stressed, how your servers is stressed in the back. The application is always to respond in the same way. The user doesn't care that, right? You just want the application run. Message driven. Uh, is an architecture, you know, lose a couple and leverage the asynchronicity to have no blocking uh, approach. And, and thanks to asynchronicity, uh, the, asynchronicity uh, the, the application is able to run multiple tasks at the same time. And this is the secret, um, it's a secret for scalability, right? Resilience means that uh, 
the system reacts uh, in a failure. Something goes wrong, the synth is able to bring back and shape the system and really some sort of self self heals is, is self deprecation and this is um, achieved really with accepting you know the, the embracing the failure and last but not least elastic which is the key for um, distributed the system uh, the system really is able to contract or spend on demand and able to add or remove nodes on the fly and this is the the key to um, the equation able to scaling up, scaling out, both scaling down. So I think this slide, everybody are tired to see this slide, but I like this one a bit because uh, it really is a good you know, color contrast between the uh, number of cores per year and the speed of the core per year, right? So the blue is the speed and the red is the core that have been added per year. And so you can see here, today really we need a new, a new, a good concurrent programming model. And today devices has more than one core, right? The evolution of the, the hardware to a multi-core core bring us new challenges, right? Uh, we, we cannot leverage in thinking you know, that the more low, um, you know, predicting certified that the speed was increasing every, um, 18 months. This is not possible anymore. We cannot think uh, write a program that leverage only one fast and faster CPU, but we have really embrace and leverage all the resources of our device and, and run the program and run in parallel. So the free lunch is over. And these days, more and more computer will be shipped with multiple cores. So until now, the majority of the languages, also the program, the language you were designed without concurrency in mind, right? Uh, you know, we have from Java, C Sharp, and so on, but that is good news, you know, we are functional programmers, so we have solution for that. But what's really is, is the issue is that the share of memory, right, the share of state. And we all know that to write concurrent application, correct concurrent application, I would say, is, is complex, right? Um, it's easy to write concurrent application is buggy. You can try not to put your lock, your, your semaphore, or your primitive here to avoid the, uh, the race condition of that lock, but the problem is that there is no really compiler or tool that tell you that you put the lock in the right place. It works your machine, right? Then you ship it, and six months later, uh, your production system is down. Because maybe, you know, this race condition, that lock happen every once every 10,000 calls. And at the same time, you put the lock there to downground the performance of the system, they don't need the lock probably once every you know, 10,000 calls. But again, you know, there's good news. You know, we are all familiar with the functional programming that you know, uh, is able to um, bring in a table concepts such as immutability that resolve this issue of shared memory. So this is not a problem with us. That's right. But I want to bring uh, this concept about isolation. And really, mutability isolation, the two secret ingredients for the secret SaaS to write log-free concurrent application. Actually, to be logic is immutability or, or isolation, right? You can write a log-free application using both but, or either one or the other. And the actor model provides both out the box. And it really enforces the isolation Toward, um, through message passing. So don't worry about the, the, the if you're familiar with F-sharp, but this is a quick implementation of how an agent F-sharp look. And you can see there is a, a loop uh, that runs synchronously here, receive a message, and, a, and I compute the message there. But interesting, here, because it's inside the body of my agent, it's isolated, so I can use even a mutable type, in this case I use a dictionary which is mutable, and I don't care, it's thread safe, right? So this is the Wikipedia definition. It says that pretty much the actor model is a general purpose programming, um, concurrent programming model, and it provides a great support for concurrency. But I read this, I don't remember where, but it really was a 
comparing the actor with a rental car, which is very interesting. And, and the idea is really you can get a, a car easily from your rental company, right? You drive around and the car broke, who cares? You could rent a car, you get a new one on a fly. Pretty nice. So I like this example. So the actor is an independent um, computational entity. And uh, it contains a message queue, as you can see in the slide. And it reacts when it receives a message and process it asynchronously. So really, the actor promotes the share nothing approach because um, you use the, mess the message, message passing. And as I remember the slide, really, you can think about the actor as a, in a synchronous loop, a synchronous loop. Um, they receive message and react when uh, a message arrives in a trade um, safe execution. And also, it's a synchronous and buffer, meaning that when you compute a message and it's busy, all the other income mass messages, they're now lost their buffer. And this is the DC you know, metro map. And think about the actor like a metro station. They receive messages, they receive the train, and you know, passenger go in, go out. But what it really means is that each single station, they don't even care about the other station around the map, right? They just receive train, that's what they care. And the actor model uh, is not really a new concept. It's been around for a while, you know, 40, over 40 years. And in the 73, Carl Hewitt um, wrote this paper that uh, it was a mathematical model for concurrency. And really, the actor model raised this abstraction level um, and provide a better way to build concurrent scale application log free. As you can see here in the slide, the actor can make local decision and create more actors, send more messages to other actors, and also determine how to respond to the next message. It means that it can change behavior, right? And usually actor come in system, so there is this, uh, this um, knowledge to say that one actor is no actor. And everybody's familiar with the, you know, the, the first major adoption in, a, in the actor model in the in 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 market was by Ericsson using, um, with, with, with Erlang. And one of the reasons that it was very famous is because these famous myth of nine niners. And because they, they, they embraced complete electric crash approach, really the system was able to run nine niners, which is like crazy number, like 30 milliseconds down per year, right? Pretty, pretty cool. So, but ultimately, an actor, well, an actor is full compliance with the Racti Manifesto, right? We can use a, a, a synchronous message passing semantic really to interact with other uh, actor sending messages. And this, is, uh, this design really is allow us to write loosely coupled system and they support um, the um, elastic systems to scaling up and scaling out using exactly the same programming model. So, F sharp really shine in distributed computing because as built in future like the asynchronous workflow and ML power processor. And also known agent. So this is a as I show earlier, this is how implemented an agent in F sharp. Which is great because really you can benefit and you leverage all the multi-core your machine you, because all the agents can run in parallel. But there is a problem with this code. It's not a bug, but the problem is here. The problem is that you can reference the agent uh, by an explicit instance, not by address. What does it mean, this? What do you mean that, that is the agent is a memory slot, right? It um, doesn't work across boundaries. It's just in process. And the, the queue is not durable. If the agent crash, you lost your state. And it doesn't have any supervision or routing built in a framework. There are framework, I'm sorry, in, 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 in the functionality, but there are framework can help you with this, but out of the box, it doesn't support all this, this, this characteristic. Think about the agent as really a memory slot, as I said. So you can put in a bucket, you know, any kind of primitive, integer, array, or whenever, but it's in the process. You can send a, a function too, right? And you can compose function and send this compose function to the agent and then maybe apply atomically 
this function to all, you know, the state or, or, or the agent. So agent is now an actor. So I just want to point out, you know, the difference. There are sometimes people use these two terms, but there are some slight difference between the two. <coughs> so any questions so far? This one? No, it's asynchronous. You see that the loop, the second line, there is a recursive loop, uh, self calling loop, is, a, is an assigned in, um, inside in a, it uses a synchronous workflow, okay. so it's not blocking. So let's pass finally to the ACA.net, uh, which is um, a port of the popular you know, Java framework to the ACA.net platform. So what is ACA? Well, ACA is a toolkit you know, to build runtime and high concurrent distributed system. And really, ACA simplified the, the implementation of the asynchronous and concurrent task. And it's all based on, on an actor model. And bring up you know, the level of abstraction to write your, your, your application using the same programming model. All the slides and code sample on GitHub, so take the picture, but I'll provide the hand, this, the, the, the link you download, everything. But, um, so actor are very, they use very a small uh, memory footprint. You can fit almost 2.7 million actor in one gig, right, which is pretty high number compared, you know, the thread in your 32 um, machine or, you know. And what does it mean this? Would it mean that you're free you provide a lot of freedom to express your, your, your domain model. You can build as many actors you want, pretty much, right? And how, you know, we can achieve this kind of um, number? Well, simply the, react, the, the actor is reactive, which means that it's idle until it doesn't have a message in a queue or receive a message. Until then, the thread on the actor is sent back to the scheduler, to the thread pool. And only when there is a message or see a message, it get the, the thread back and do something. So. That's why you know, it's a very, uh, very uh, small footprint. So how do we keep you know, the actor system of uh, falling apart when something goes wrong? Well, supervision. If you were here today in you know, previous talk, you already know what is supervi supervision. Um, and how supervision can solve the problem, right? Well, there are different approach. Well, first of all, uh, if something goes wrong, the supervisor is able to check what kind of exception your child raised and apply some sort of strategy, some directive. And at the same time, we have uh, also supervision strategy, and we'll see later uh, what does it mean that. But really the concept is that, hey, let it crash, right? I mean, embrace it. Uh, we all write program, you know, in very defensive way. We are get paranoid. We'll try catch here, try catch, catch there. And you know, you're worried to get your exception, your system go down. Who cares? Just let it crash. That's the solution, you know. And think about at a new state of your application, right? Your application can start, can run, it can crash. And when it crash, well, then you can deal with. So, and this is a, what um, Ericsson was able to reach uh, using Erlang, right? The nine niners, embracing the philosophy of let it crash. And it's all based on the uh, error kernel, which is the small portion of your, your application that keep it small as possible because it must be always right. And um, that's a responsible to um, apply all your strategy and, and, uh, and um, your strategy to, to, to your nodes when something goes wrong. So as I mentioned, there are two main strategies, one for one supervisor. And what does it mean is that if something goes wrong with your node, the supervisor just takes some action, check the exception, and maybe restart, resume the, the, the single node. And everything goes back to work happy. Or we have all for one supervisor. In this case, if the child turns an exception, something goes wrong, the supervisor apply this, uh, this strategy to all the sibling of the node. Remoting. So remoting is a the key to write, you know, distributed system. And um, 
In ACA, you can send message locally or remotely using exactly the same API and keep it transparent to the user, right? It really provides um, a unified programming model. Uh, this concept is called location transparency. And location transparency is uh, mean that pretty much whenever you send a message to an actor, you don't need to know if your system sends a message to an actor that is local or remote in the network. You just send a message, right? And uh, this is the secret to um, scaling up or scaling out your system. And you can see in the slide, you can get a handle of your actor just passing the path, right? You have your protocol, your system name, your address, and, and the path. And there is a, the user is called guardian. We're not gonna go in detail there, but it's like the top level actor on your system. And then from there, you all, the, 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 the tree of your actor. This is just one actor, but it can be slash, the child name, or the actor, and so on. So, as you can see, you just get a handle of the actor, but in the, in the last line, or here, you just use the select function, and you pass the address of the actor, and you get the handle of the actor. And it's all transparent, and you send a message. And what really, does, what really looks to the user it's just a bunch of nodes, right? You don't need to know what's up underneath it. But underneath it, really, that's how it looks. And whenever an actor creates a child, it's the actor system that decides whenever the child belongs to the current system, local or remote, right? And this is all keeping the location transparency to, uh, to the user. F Sharp API, um, before jumping a code, uh, only a few slides left, but uh, what I really like about the, the combination of ACA.NET and Sharp API, it is a unique feature of the language uh, that is called code, code quotation. And what it does is really create an abstract syntax tree of your code. And ACA.NET is able to wrap this code, serialize it, and send it remotely to deploy remotely uh, uh, an actor, or change behavior remotely to an actor remotely, right? Almost as Erlang does, so if there is any Erlang here now, just don't laugh on me, but uh, almost, right? So routing is built in on a language. It really is used to spawn multiple instances on an actor that uh, can work distributed and really load balance uh, between them. It can be, uh, you can create your uh, actor and inject in a, in a router, or even better, you can tell how many instances of the child, the actor, uh, should have, and they create for you many actor, and then it's all responsible to dispatch the message to his child. So there are different strategies for the routing, you know, a uh, few of them, broadcasting, which is, you know, as uh, the name said, is generally broadcast the message to all the child, and this is used sometime when maybe you want to send a message to different actors, but maybe this actor has different behavior, so you want to apply different behavior to the same message. Round robin pool, you know, is just a strategy that send a message and use a round robin, uh, round robin uh, old fashioned algorithm just, you know, sequentially to send a message to uh, one actor at a time in, in, in a they belong to the router. Or grouping, this is a rather big group, it really, when you create your own actor, this is like pretty much matching your broadcast and your uh, round robin loop, right? So you create your actor, maybe with different behavior, and pass it to the router, and dispatch all the, 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 the message to all the agent in the same group. <coughs> this is the last slide before jumping in, in a code, finally. Uh, I really want to point out, though, there is a, this concept of type and untype actor in the ACA. And as you can imagine, types are type and untype not. And the reason that we have these actors is that ACA.net or even ACA, you know, in a, in a JVM are built using statically typed languages, right? So it's not, Erlang, for instance, doesn't have this concept because it's all dynamic language. And type, Type actors are actually this kind of cover the bridge and 
make it easy to communicate between imperative language to the actor because the imperative language can call the actor like was a method, it's a method, right? But it's still recommended to use untyped actor. And this reason is because sometimes it's easier for you to change behavior when we deploy a new behavior to the actor, but you know, could change the signature, right? So this is how implemented, but uh, let's jump to see some code. Okay, but to start, we just download the package ACA and let's jump in Visual Studio, right? Any question? Yep. About the broadcast. Yeah. How do you guarantee that? What happens if I mean, the messages are guaranteed to be delivered? So, of well, as you know, there are three approaches. Like, there is the best effort uh, at least once or once. So, best effort is no guarantee, but if you are in this. Okay, if you are in the same system, pretty much it's guaranteed. If you send a message out the network, you know, there is some problem with the network, you lost. At least once, you just send a bunch of messages until you should receive it at least once. And the last one is, um, it's not recommended because it's very intense, the usage, right? To only once to do a lot of work for you underneath it, you know, to check and the message receives, some knowledge, so, but yeah, you can apply this. Strategies. Uh, so, ACA is super well documented. If you was really impressively nice documented. So, I'm going time. All right. So let's start. Let's start with the basic. I'll create an actor. So first of all, you create your system, right, and you give a name. In this case, F-sharp. I created this echo server, which is an untyped actor, and it just inherited from the uh, actor. And then you can override or receive message. The message here, I don't know if you can see it, but just an object, because this is untyped. So uh, what I had to do now, I had to check what type it is with the um, um, pattern matching here using the, the, the test. Um, function here and check what type it is, my message, and apply some, some behavior, some, some action. Then I create my actor, in this case, line 33, and then I send a message. In this case, if I send a string, it just prints back hello. If I send an integer, it doesn't know what's kind, what to do, so it's just gonna print, you know, what should I do with this thing. So let's run the code in a REPL here. Oops. Just gonna select everything, send to the REPL. Create my oh man, create my actor. So if I pass the string, it doesn't know what to do. And say hello F sharp. Oh, by the way, so here, when you create an actor and you don't specify a name, it creates a name for you. And this is uh, the address that you can use to get a handle. It's recommended to use specify a name. So is it also to debug and check what's going on in the specific actor. If I send an integer, well, it doesn't match uh, the string, so it prints me, no, I don't know what to do with this type. A little better approach is uh, I can, this was a, uh, an untyped actor, this is a type one, so I still inherited from my receive actor. Uh, I can use, you know, some mutable state uh, inside my actor because it, you know it's thread safe, and I can create some specialized function here that uh, um, receive a specific message. In this case, message or other message, right? I'm big in fantasy, but so this is my message type. So what's happening is that every time I send a message, the function that is specialized for that specific message receives the message, but I can even override in a handle message that they do exactly what it did the previous actor, like on receive and type object, right? So let's run this. Until what time I should go? So I load everything here. Create my system. Create my actor. So now I print the message here. 
so I send the message print and just expecting that print zero because my mutable state is zero, right? If I send three time plus print, it's going to increment three time, you can see my mutable state is three. And the same thing I can do with the other message. I, this is the other message type, so I call the other function and access the, the, the local mutable state because that's safe. The display now is two. And if I send ciao, you know, I don't know what to do. This is when I send a message to the handle function because it doesn't know what to do. So this is great, but we're functional programmers, right? So this is very imperative stylish. So there must be a better way. And this is, all right. <coughs> Should I show around this one? Oh, there you go, better. Yeah. So again, I will create my message here. So first of all, this is a bit different. It's not anymore actor system dot create. And this is a F sharp um, API. And what it does is it um, provides some extra feature, such as the famous code quotation to serialize your actor and deploy remotely. And we'll see an example later. I use my spawn function to spawn a new actor, passing the system and my actor name. And then I pass my function, my, bell my mailbox function here that uh, um, is pretty much the behavior of my, my actor. And I use a, an actor uh, computation expression in F sharp, which is, just, is pretty much um, should have inside, like, uh, should expect like a, a synchronous recursive function to receive messages. So instead of writing you know, your recursive function synchronous, it just provided for you out the box. And here, in this specific example, I pass um, the actor implement actually two state. And depending on the message, the message can change the state of my actor, right? So if I, the, the actor start in a loop state, which is this portion, and when I receive a message, you can decide to print and change the state in again, passing a state, which is the string that I pass with a message. And at this point, the actor start to run in this, um, uh, using this um, actor computation expression, this behavior. So, I'm expecting that if I pass the same name, say hello again, or a reset, right? So let's run, let's run this example. And I have a very cool example coming soon, don't worry. So I load all my code, which is, I'm not familiar with Sharp. The, the, I mean, the Rappel here is a very nice feature, so you can load your, your code in memory. And also when you do data manipulation, you have to load your data all the time, so it's pretty nice. So at this point, the actor is in a loop. And oh, by the way, yes. So instead to say dot tell or dot ask, when you send a, send a message expecting a response, F sharp provide out of the box the arrow, left arrow bang or left arrow question mark instead as a part of the API, which is a bit nicer. So the actor right now is in a loop state. So if I send great Ricky, just say hello Ricky. But if I send exactly the same message, is in the gain state, so just say hello again. And hi, I can reset the state. And um, so just point out, I'll be more functional. You just spawn function here, so it'll be prettier in uh, the imperative way. Uh, another example here that I want to run okay, is a uh, chat. Classic chat example, just to have a, you know, um, an example to run how the process. You have uh, three projects. One is you know, all my messages that I sent to the actor. So not much details here. Just bear with me. You know. it's just, um. So here I create my actor. And uh, here I use the Fluent API to configure my actor. You see two ways, actually. One passes the string, if you remember, and one uses the Fluent API. Uh, the difference is that with the string, actually, if you, you can uh, put the string in the configuration in the external file, in the app config, and you're able to change the, the, the configuration actor, you know, without redeploy or recompile your code. So in this case, my, uh, this is the server. This, I create my server, and I spawn my server, and my server starts to receive my messages, and just, you know, register a user when they receive the, um, 
the message to connect request and broadcast that the user is, uh, is connected, or you know, say a request, you receive a message, and broadcast to all the client that they are registered to my um, local mailbox state, which is in this case here. Okay, and the client, as you can imagine, I register my username when I start the, 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 the console app, and I use the select to take a handle to my remote server, in this case, and send a message to the remote server to register myself, the connect request, or to broadcast a message, right? So pretty straightforward, but um, it's pretty nice to see how it's uh, easy to spawn a, uh, an actor and then able to connect out the process, right? So let's start the server. Now I'm gonna start two instances of my client, otherwise pretty sad to talk by yourself, right? All right, one instance is running and second instance is running. So my client is here and my actor, my server is here. So Ricky, you register, connecting, as you can see and now, my server received my, my request, and uh, Ryan is connecting, is connecting my server log, so now I can say, ciao, my Ricky received <coughs> my message, my server broadcast, this is the message broadcast to all the listener, you know. So, pretty easy how communicate, you know, how the process. So, let's pass to the, um, Supervi supervision, which is, so I'm not gonna run this example, I'm gonna run the next one, but just to um, semantically, really it's easy to increment your option, your supervisor strategy, passing you know, one, for, uh, one for one, one for all, and in this case, this will be more complex, so when you receive your message and you check what sign of exception it is and apply some extra, I know, uh, directive. In this case, I can resume, stop, escalate. So, but a uh, better example here is more complex here. I create my function here, worker func, to instantiate a new actor. I create my uh, system, my strategy in this case. I resume and restart. I actually resume in this case. And, uh, when my actor receives a negative number, it's gonna raise an arithmetic exception. So in this case, my supervisor strategy is kick in and do something. And my supervisor, in this case, spawn the actor inside. So this actor belong to the, to the supervisor because this relation child and parents. So if I run this code here, There is an interesting behavior that uh, I want to point out. So, because the strategy is a resume, right? I can send a message. And you can see here in line uh, 68, I use the left uh, arrow question mark because I'm sending a message and expecting something back asynchronously. That's why it's a synchronous block. So, I send this message here. and I get him back five, which is the state of my child, right? Now, if I send a negative number, right? So train exception, but interesting, I train exception, my supervisor uh, strategy kick in and was able to keep the state of my child, which is a five. That's pretty nice. If I instead change the, the to restart, it restart, it create an actor and you're gonna lose your, your state. I wanna be in time here, so I just run one more example and then go to the uh, nicer one. So I'm gonna go to the uh, remoting one. This is the, uh, no, oh, remote deployed here, okay. So this is where 
I can remote deploy it in actor. So in this case, I create an actor, sorry, I start a new process using this uh, console app that uh, is load here console remote ACA, which as you can see, it start, there is no reference, it just create a system listening. And also in a, in a, in a reference, there is no reference to any project that is, uh, has an actor um, created for you. So what I will do here, I create some configuration. I have some helper function, but I use spawn E, which is um, this function that deploy something remotely, right? Not in a local system. In this case, I deploy, uh, I use the um, deploying a remote scope, passing an address, you can see here. And it is a function just um, apply all these functions together, pass an address. And here is where I use my local system, but I tell to send to this system remotely an actor with the name hello, and this is implementation, right? Put in code quotation. This code quotation, this is a code that we serialize and deploy remotely. So let's run this to prove it. Send. So, oh yeah. So this is now it's my remote system listening. If I run this function here, okay, now remotely I deploy an actor, which doesn't do nothing fancy here. We see something fancier in the next example. But right now, if I send a message to the handle, I received today my console, which was nothing before I just removed this actor. And transparently, I can create still, uh, I mean, I can get the, um, I can still use um, the address to get the handle and send the message. And you can see a hello again. Or I can, create, I can still create actor locally and send to the local system. And you can see the, local, the, system, the message sent to the lo uh, an actor just created locally here. I think it's pretty cool. Any question that before I run is something a bit more fancier? Yep. Are there security concerns that I need to send in code quotation to Security concern for code quotation, no. Security concern about, you know, create actor, the talk each other network, that's, you know, yes. But most likely be, you know, in a secure network, hopefully behind, you know, the scene. Uh, I'm not gonna go in some detail, but it supports also some, it's called HTTP, it's a toolkit for HTTP where you can actually, you can use HTTP, HTTP SSL to connect remotely. And, you know, HTTP, everybody talk HTTP, but for about code quotation, no. Unless you send, you know, a code quotation to erase your hard drive, but hey, it's your foot, right? So, the Fractal. So the Fractal is a four project. There is a C-sharp, very inefficient algorithm to create some images, passes some uh, detail here. But this is, I won't lose time here. C-sharp, come on. This is a share library. have uh, some record type. If you're not familiar with F-sharp, record type is uh, some sort of class with property, properties that are all uh, uh, immutable and those support structural equality. I have some helper function to convert an image in array and vice versa. I have the tile render. This is uh, my actor, okay? I pass my bad box. My render here is uh, infer because I do something in a body with this type that image my render tile uh, signature. So it's smart enough to understand what I want to what a type. And what I do is just pass my information to the Melbrot, receive, a, create an image, convert in bytes, and send it back to the sender, which is a, a, the actor that send the message, right? Bless you. The remote here, guess what? It is a, a system that wait in this port and nothing else. There is nothing here, right? As I also as a reference, there is not even the reference from the share fractal that was the implementation of the tile. Their library is just used to the uh, fractal project. And the fractal, well, this is just some WinForm UI with a picture box. 
I do some setting here, sorry, some setting here for the proprietary. I create a system, line 82, pass in my configuration. I my render tile, which is just a function that get a record tile, render tile in a, a form of array, convert the images and render to my image. It just came in for the grand finale, good. I use uh, the, I, this is a display tile actor and uh, it just received a render tile. I apply my function to render to my picture and I use a dispatcher which use the local synchronization context to avoid you know, um, marshalling exception. I deploy my actor, I mean I create my deployment function, my router, round robin in this case, and I deploy the tile render remotely, which is, you know, the tile render that receives the, the record type, massage it, and make it pretty to display my uh, strategy and my split. And so the idea of the, the application is a picture box and send square of the picture box remotely, do some Melbrot uh, uh, computation and send back the image reprocess and render to my local WinForm, okay? So I run my remote actor that again, doesn't have any implementation and doesn't know anything about any actors. Okay, I've, I get an extra minute. So. I run this application, this is Fractal. So now I'm gonna start the <coughs> WinForm here. This is my, this is my um, console. There was no implementation of any actor, just display in my, uh, some login. And here there is some image processing to render my image, right? Pretty cool. Let's do something better in this. So let's close everything. How about if we change the round robin 16, right? So what you're supposed to do now, my remote actor will create 16 instances of my, my, my actor, 16 child. And it dispatch one message at a time, you know, using a round robin algorithm. So I'm expecting it to be faster, right? So let's run my, my remote actor. Oh, come on. Don't give up on me the last minute. All right, it's building. Seriously? So anyways, um, when, for, when uh, to complete in here, it's almost done. Bear with me, a bit pretty cool. Oh, Visa Studio, sometime I hit you. This is not big, usually take three seconds, but hey. All right, so back to business. Remote actor, again, doesn't do, doesn't know anything. I run my fractal, and now my fractal actually send remotely my uh, tile uh, actor and create 16 instances, right? So I'm expecting it'll be faster right now. There was just, with just single change of a number. I create six, that's pretty cool, right? All right. Uh, any question? Best practice, I don't see any speaker coming in. This speaker, next speaker here. Okay, best practice, keep your actor uh, using the single responsibility principle. So you specialize your actor for one specific thing. So you'll be able to compose them. Don't be cheap in uh, create your supervisor strategy because you can create as many supervisors as you want to. But each child can only one supervisor, right? So create as much as you want to. And uh, avoid premature optimization, of course. As I did the last example, start with one and then change it later on, right? Pro and cons, a lot of pro. The only cons is that when you sometimes you have sharing between actor that requires some sort of, you know, um, like in a transaction, they need some sort of knowledge between them. And to summarize, go reactive, right? Let's face it, actor model is pretty awesome. You solve the problem, scaling up, scaling out for you and say, using the same programming model. So any question? 
This is my resources. GitHub there for my slides and my code sample. I already uploaded uh, to the Lambda.com site. And that's all.